Hello, this is uh, Zenochat, a Zeno themed podcast that covers Zeno Gears, Zeno Saga, all the way up to Zeno Blade. Um, I am your host, Tyler, uh, here with my co host, Justin. How's it going, everybody? This is Justin here. All right, and we have our guest today, and her name is Kat. Hello, everybody. Okay, so yeah, if you're new, uh, as we kind of start out, we just kind of go over any recent news with the Zeno franchise that we can think of. Um, from there, uh, Kat, I'd like you to kind of discuss your involvement in the Zeno series, how you got into it, and then after that, we'll get into today's topic, um, which is Zeno Gears. Um, <laughs> okay, so as. All right, starting with news, um, the only thing I can think of um, was the uh, recent staff recruitment for uh, Molosoft that was going around. I'm excited. Um, yes, I am so excited, too, because, um, yeah, I, as much as I love Xenoblade 2, uh, I'm very excited for them to Molosov to move on to whatever's next. So I was very happy to hear them like recruiting and expanding. So that, that was really nice. For sure. It's always a good time when we know that they're going to be working on a new project. Who mm. knows what it might be? Maybe it'll be Xenoblade 3 or it could be Xenoblade Cross 2, which would be pretty sweet. Or hey, mm-hmm. maybe they're going to you know throw a curveball and do a little Baton Kaitos. Hmm. Cool. Oh, that... Yes, that would be nice. I know the producer, uh, Yasuyuki Hon, he mentioned on Twitter the other day that he was interested in making another one, but that which would be really, really nice. It's a, it's a time of year where I really wish I was born Japanese. Oh. Because <laughs> oh. uh, I think there was an article that mentioned Takahashi, uh, Takahashi was uh, looking for a character designer, and I'm just sort of like pulling at the screen. <laughs> hire me! Hire me! <laughs> yeah, that's that's great, and it's interesting because uh, it's weird that like Monosoft like doesn't really have like a character designer. All of their character designers are just freelance, so that's interesting how they're actually trying to actually hire a character designer this time, but. I would definitely hire you, Kat, if you oh. if you if I if I worked at Molosop. Well, thank you. <laughs> um. Yeah, they yeah they were going yeah, a character designer, and I forget what other positions yeah, they, they had available. Like so many. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, like battle planners, quest planners. I, I'm looking at the, um, cause, uh, Kat and I are part of a, a Discord channel with some Zeno people. I was looking at, uh, I don't know how to pronounce their username, L- Lugal Banda. Yeah, that's what I, I was. I, yeah, I was looking at their translation of, uh, Takahashi, Takahashi's message. So that's really nice that they, and I'll, I'll, if I, if I remember, I'll try to put a link to it when I, put up this episode but it's a, wasn't it's a really interesting com- wasn't Soraya huh? complaining about that in- interview um that like somebody mistranslated it or something like that oh I remember seeing on Twitter oh, she did- made a she she made like a tweet that said like you know yeah be careful when you're translating stuff so that you don't you relate a correct message to your fans hold on let me oh. to tweet up I remember she was she was talking about that this is a few days ago uh hold on um, I don't know. I don't know if it's in relation to this, but I, yeah, here here it is. There's this tweet that she said that said, uh, Dear news sites, when you quote Japanese comments or tweets, it'd be highly appreciated if you kindly translate it faithfully to the original and refrain from mistranslating, adapting, taking it out of context. Mistranslation confuses not only people, but also situations. I'm thinking it might have been in reference to the Yasuyuki Hone tweet that he made, but I'm not 100% certain. Because I know Lugo Banda just kind of did it out of, like, fun. I don't think they, like... Because I think 
didn't some website get a hold of their translation? But I can't remember which one. Yeah, I'm not sure what, what fully what it's in reference to, but I, I remember seeing that, and that came out after um, something from Xenoblade related came out. So I, I wasn't sure if it was in relation to that or not, but uh, I figured maybe one of you two would know. No, sorry. <laughs> yeah. There's just uh, yeah, there's no, a, I. There's uh, a lot of freelance translators just doing doing articles uh, uh, for themselves these days, so it's it's hard to. To track uh-huh. down um, who who has it right and who doesn't have it right or when it was when it was done, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's a really good point. Um, everyone's trying to get a hot story out these yeah, days, so true. who knows that's, where things are coming. That's Especially true, and yeah, and it looks like uh, Soria Saga did that tweet on the eighth, and I think, well, Lugo. Bonda put up their translation on the 4th, so I don't know if it might be in reference to that. I hope but not. I, I don't know. I hope not. You seem yeah, to do a pretty yeah. good job. Okay. Well, is there any other uh, news uh, Zeno-related or Molosoft-related that anyone can think of? Not really. Other than I love them, and I, I pray for con- the continued success of the company. <laughs> Yes. 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 And Square, please, please send me my Fei Fong Wong figure. Yes, I want it. Send him his figure. I want it. <laughs> I, I want my because you don't have it yet. It's like every episode of this podcast is just going to be me ask. Just please send it to me already. It's like Square Enix. If you're listening to this, please don't send it to him. <laughs> Oh, Justin. So Justin, why? It's like me trying to trying to roll Cosmos in uh, Xenoblade 2. Uh, oh, yeah. I, I haven't tried oh. since I got Torna. I should try again because they gave me a bunch of like legendary crystals. Oh, yeah. I remember I got like 30 of them and I got just like one rare out of all those legendary crystals. How many rares do you have left to roll, though? I want to say five or six. Oh, okay, so that's going to be harder for you the more... Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, Kat, I, I think I've said this story on the last episode of the podcast, but I'll say it again since you haven't heard it. So this is how I got Cosmos, and it's a good one. <laughs> so Xenoblade 2 came out, right? And I was playing it, and when the game came out, it had some pretty bad memory bugs and I don't even think they fully fixed them but it was really bad at launch so I got to I believe it was chapter three when you finally get Mithra and you you know there's a whole series of bosses that you have to fight before you get to that and then there's a cutscene where you finally get access to Mithra and you see um the uh, that move that she does where it's like I think it's called the focus where she can like see into the she can like avoid attacks. I can see the future. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, um, in the middle of that cutscene, it crashed. Oh. And I was really upset. And I said, you know what? I am not playing this game anymore. Put it down. Stop playing it for about a week. I was like, I'm, I'm fed up with this game. Can't play it. And then about a week, I think a week, maybe a week and a half later, they released a patch. Um, they fixed some things. I said, you know what? I'll, I'm going to pick this game back up. The first... Crystal. It's Cosmos. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. So, yeah, my advice to get Cosmos, be pissed off at the game, leave it for a week, and then pick it back up. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then the game just pities you and gives it. Yep. Gives you. Her. I, I like it. I, I am not as pissed as I was when I was trying to beat Xenoblade Cross. Um, I got to the, the boss fight before the last one, and just because I'd rushed the story, I was under leveled, and I just kept on wiping and wiping and wiping, and I got so mad. Uh, I had the same issue too. Um, the I believe the final boss name was the Vita, yeah. which is kind of funny to think that you're on, on a Nintendo console destroying the Vita. <laughs> no. <laughs> that symbolism, though, it, but. But yeah, I remember that fight was really, really hard. Um, it had multiple phases, and then it it always put you at a 
at a point where you're just really disadvantaged. Yeah. I just, I, I wish there was a difficulty slider on Xenoblade Cross, because I am such a scrub at modern modern Xeno games. It's, it's really bad. I couldn't beat Xenoblade uh-huh. 2 on regular difficulty. I had to wait until the easy patch was patched. Ah. Uh, <laughs> well, well, I'm lame, and that's how I got Elma, is by changing the custom oh, difficulty yeah. to, like, the lowest yep. in order to get her. <laughs> yep. I, 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 lowest difficulty and auto battle. I set the controller down, made myself a sandwich, and watched it as, uh, <laughs> like, half an hour later, I got her. <laughs> <laughs> nice. It was worth it. It was worth all the pain Xenoblade Cross caused me when I was playing it. Yeah. Uh, it came out, like, right before my winter break, and I couldn't beat it by the end of my winter break because it was only two weeks, or maybe even half a week. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was like... I have to beat this, <laughs> um, but then I didn't because I I was like I was so intent on only rushing story content that I didn't really level or care to, mm-hmm. to do a lot of the side quests, and uh, it really kind of messed me up in the long run. Yeah, yeah. it's really hard with Xenoblade Cross too because a lot of the best stuff isn't even available to you during the main story. Yeah. I don't know if you guys have ever looked into the um, the old Jedi builds. No. Uh-uh. So yeah, th- that was a thing. Um, I never fully finished, but I remember I was working on it. So it's basically it's an infinite overdrive build, so you can pretty much solo any boss in a game and oh, just no. not die with it. Neat. Huh. Yeah, because they're constantly building TP as you're doing your attacks and. Yeah, it's just really awesome, and there's videos of people just being on foot taking down like these gigantic, unique monsters so and cool. just completely destroying them. Oh, that's awesome! I have to give that a shot. I have to make space in my house for my Wii U again and pick it back up. Oh. I don't think I even reached level cap. I think uh, my my last save to the server for Jerkface, uh, I was at level fifty eight <laughs> or something, and I was specced as a tank. <laughs> and that's that's my story there. <laughs> <laughs> well, hint, hint, uh, while it's off the Nintendo port, port to Xenoblade Cross to the Switch, please. please, please. Does the online still work on that? Yes, I think so. Because hmm, uh, that gives me an idea um, for a future episode. That'd be kind of interesting if we got a few of us to play online on that, and we'd like. Stream it on Twitch Ooh, or something. That'd be cool. Oh, that actually would be really cool. I'd be up for yeah. That. <laughs> so I'd like to pick the game up again, and I need an excuse to dig the Wii U out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so how? Uh, let's uh, move on then. Um, Cat, would you like to discuss your history with the Zeno franchise, please? Awesome. Okay. <laughs> so the first time. I picked up a Zeno game, or actually my first encounter with a Zeno game. Uh, I was over my best friend in high school's house, and she was watching the end mm-hmm. of Zeno Gears, and uh, I oh. had no idea what was going on. And she was like, "Hey, Cat, uh, I'm gonna loan you this game. You should play it." And I was like, uh, "Okay." And then uh, twenty years later, <laughs> it is my anti-drug. <laughs> it is my everything. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that'd be kind of weird to that'd be kind of weird to walk in on. It's like, oh, what is this? Yeah. You're you're playing a game where these bunch of naked people running around at the end. What? Lots of butts. <laughs> Many butts. <laughs> Lots of. <laughs> and you don't even know you're getting spoiled. Nope. I actually, by the time I'd uh, gotten to the ending, I had totally forgotten about it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Um, but yeah, um, me and my best friend in high school, Kelly, um, sort of had been exchanging video games and uh, other other IPs when, when we were we were younger. Uh, actually, this is when this was twenty years ago. <laughs> this is when the game launched because I am old. I'm thirty six. <laughs> um, uh, uh, I shouldn't be allowed on the internet anymore. Um, but here I am. Oh, you're uh, you're fine. You're fine. Um, 
but yeah, like we we would exchange interests. I think it started with FF six, which is uh, FF three North American, uh, and it just sort of uh-huh. like compiled on from from there. And um, uh, okay, so by the time I had reached college, uh, I was sort of like I was in a bit of a bad state, and my other friend Tony was like. Cat, cat, I know that you love Xenogears. Play this other thing. Play it, play it. What is this other thing? Play it, play it, play it. No, what, what is this other thing? It's Xenosaga. I was like, what the heck is Xenosaga? <laughs> and then I accidentally, the, the whole thing. <laughs> um, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> When, when I was playing Xenogears, I was super, super, super into Ramses, and, like, the the, mm-hmm. the ending Ramses got just, like, completely cemented my love for him, um, <laughs> and um, the way uh, Xenosaga treated Cherenkov, it was, like, every, almost every story point that, that was important it was, like, hey, Ramses fan, look at this. Hey, Ramses fan, look at this. Look at this. Oh my god. Holy oh shit. And um, when, when I when I like realized what they were doing, it was like when they said the G word, when 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 garbage was said, it was just like a lightning bolt. It was like, oh my god, I see what they're doing. It's amazing. This is better than Star Wars. Holy shit. Oh. And I, I was I was very excitable. Uh, 22 year old <laughs> and I was like I, I, I was trying to uh, sort of like evangelize Xenosaga for, for just like to have more people to talk to in real life but I sort of just like ended up uh, seeming like this this total like quaking fan <laughs> fan person um, <laughs> uh, and it was just like I had no chill <laughs> but it was um, I was having some bad times, and it, it kept me distracted from the bad times. Mm-hmm. Um, I think by the time Xenosaga 3 came out, I'm sorry, I, uh, I, I slipped in and out of Xeno Zeno, uh, because... <laughs> it's, it's quite alright. Yeah, I, uh, I, I think when I was first into it, uh, we just, me and my best friend just said Zeno, because it was, you know, the, the Latin root word. Um, but I know it's supposed to be Zeno because that's how, uh, that's how Japanese works. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, okay. Zeno Saga 2 came out, and I, I was coming off of a, a, a very bad, like, life-changing event uh, that sort of, like, shook me very personally, and the, uh-huh. for some reason, Zeno Saga 2's control scheme slash battle, battle stuff it just, like, it wasn't jiving well with how I was doing, so I, I put it down. And I ended up watching uh-huh. some of the cutscenes. Um, I think I watched the end. Uh, I think my friend Kelly 100%ed Zeno Saga 2, and she, she said she hated it the entire time. But no. she also 100%ed Zeno Saga 2. <laughs> so I got to watch the yeah. end there. Um, and then um, uh, after I gave up on Zeno Saga 2, I was like... Uh, why am I here? All my favorite characters are dead. Uh, but then somebody told me that Margulis didn't die. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> and then <laughs> I, I think I grabbed onto the news that Xenosaga 3 was coming out. Uh, and I was like, holy crap, holy crap, I'm alive. <laughs> my favorite is alive. <laughs> I have a reason to go on. Uh, <laughs> and um, I think... Prior to that, I sort of lived in my own little world. I would post my stuff on like Live Journal, not really venture out in, into too many fandom community things because mm-hmm. I had my, my dumb little rare pair <laughs> and I didn't want to bother too many people with it. So like I, I didn't feel like I belonged in the uh, in the fandom at large. Like I knew mm-hmm. there were several um, fan websites. But every time I tried to join one, I was just re- just overcome with nervousness, and I would see a hate thread about a character that I loved, and I was like, mm-hmm. oh, I don't belong mm-hmm. here. Oh. <laughs> but uh, I think uh, shortly after I beat Xenosaga 3, uh, I met um, my best friend Aaron, uh, who goes by <gasps> Stitch Moon. Um, Stitch Moon! Yes, and um, we just sort of like 
continually did more and more Xenosaga fan content. And I got to the point where I was confident enough in, in my stuff that it was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to venture out and, and try to hang out with more people. And um, I joined more Xenosaga groups and was like, and, and then um, I think it was either 2009 or 10, uh, I met somebody named Jesse, and together we started the uh, the fan site Godsib, uh, and that mm. was that was up for uh, a good number of years. I think it was mm. it was either 2010 to 2012. Um, that sounds right. Yeah, and that's where I met you. Oh, so that was you. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that, that was me. <laughs> I'm I also go by Cadmus online. But yeah, that's um, at Godsib. Um, that's that's how I met. Um, that's how I met Tyler. Uh, and yes. Yes, <laughs> we have been friends for many, many years after. Yes, yes, we have. Yeah. Um, Jeez, I feel like I'm the rogue Zeno fan. Like I was in none of the fandoms, none of the forums. I kind of just like did my own thing. This is actually like the first time I've ever really been in a zeno community so to speak if you can even call it zeno chatter community there's a bunch of people talking on the microphone it's but yeah it's... i mean this, well, this is the first time i've like got to talk like like get like this with people about zeno <laughs> anything so this this was nice yeah, I, I am so nervous right now. I had many cups of Earl Grey, so I'm I, I I'm worried that I sound like a quaking fangirl. But no, you're you're only, fine. That's only because I am. <laughs> no, you're fine. I'm I'm nervous every episode, so it, it works out. <laughs> but yeah. Don't worry, I'm only gonna bite you really hard. Uh, I need, no, I, I need to go home and do my homework. <laughs> my thirty-six. No, no, Justin. <laughs> no, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I think um, Godsib um, unfortunately broke apart due, due in part to a hacking, and um, since Jesse was unavailable to, to help with the, uh, the rebuild of it, uh, I broke off and started my own thing, which is called uh, Xeno Underground. It's basically uh -huh. we grabbed as many fan materials as we could and you know just kept them all up. I think um, when when Godsib was formed, um, the some of the, the the older communities had been falling apart, and we were trying to like save screenshots and scans, books, um, and because like people were, were dropping out of the fandom, then because there was like no guarantee of where it was going, Namco uh -huh. had like dropped Monolith, and everybody was like, "Oh, it's over," and. <laughs> stuff like that um but then it's like godsib and xeno underground just exist as an archival project mostly um mm. uh xeno underground's forums are basically dead because I, I i can't be there to 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 lead the band and post a lot because my job is very demanding um, yeah <laughs> I, I feel i feel bad because i haven't looked at the boards in forever i think i logged in last week maybe <laughs> Were there any new posts? Uh, I don't think so. I think there was a new member. Oh, that's nice. Not a bot? <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Um, but yeah, I, I have no plans of, of shutting down. <laughs> um, even if, like, even if uh, nobody talks on there, um, I, I, I intend to, to be the archivist. <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm not that great an essayist, uh, but I can upload things and keep them there in the same place for years. <laughs> I'm good at that. Well, that's a very admirable venture. I've always appreciated that you keep all that stuff up, so thank you, Kat. You're welcome. <laughs> you know, and that's something to be said about the Zeno community in general, and something that I actually really love about the community is people are really good at archiving stuff. Um, like gears, how many like gears assets have gotten archived over the years? Like, there's that one site that went down, and and it, there's like a backup of it, and people have it saved. Oh yeah, uh, is it Zeno Tensei? Uh, I think it is Zeno Tensei, yeah. And it because because I remember it went down like a while ago, and but there's archives of it just lying around, and people are keeping it up, which is just fantastic. Yep. And I think um, uh, what is his name? AC himself has uh, reposted his own archive up that he used to have on uh, Xenotensei, and um, uh -huh. 
that is a very revered archive among the fans, um, and it's it's pretty cool that he uh, brought it all back up. Um, I'm trying to think of what I was going to say next. I forgot. You can edit that out, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true, <laughs> but it's fine. Okay, um, so I think um, during the end of Godsub's uh, run as a fan site, uh, Xenoblade came out, and uh, mm. there was a gigantic argument among among fans about which which was better, old Xeno or new Xeno, and my uh, yeah. my answer is all Xeno is good Xeno. <laughs> you put it very yes. well, <laughs> uh, and that sort of like uh, there were there were a lot of fights breaking out like within the fandom, and it, it really disheartened me, and it kind of made me uncomfortable with people again like I, I had been like since since i was the sort of like second in command of god Sib and now well like uh i i was like a general fan i wasn't just the like the person in the corner who only cared about the enormous character side like uh, i i felt some <laughs> some responsibility uh for for my community and um mm-hmm. and there was a lot of like name calling and negativity and it's like I, I i didn't know how to deal with it so i just sort of like stopped posting <laughs> because i don't want to start or continue an argument <laughs> but the argument always came back up like even even on xeno underground um just like uh, a lot of old guard fans just don't like the new stuff um and it's it's tragic because it it really went a long way to um sort of preventing newer fans from enjoying the older material and, mm-hmm. yeah um, it's kind of sad because it almost seems like a, a, a repetitive cycle because it seems like the same thing happened when like cross came out people like were com- like s- complaining about cross being different from the original and when Xenoblade right. 2 came out about how things have changed so much so it, it yeah, it seems like a very repetitive cycle within the Zeno fandom in general. Yeah, it's like Zeno fans hate each other, and it's very tragic. <laughs> and I wish they didn't. Um, yeah, it's very fragmented. Yeah, I, I love them all individually. That's exactly how I feel. They both have their strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, like I, I really like Blade because it came out at a time where I really needed it. But you know, I have a huge soft spot for our Saga. In fact, I think doing this podcast has actually made me appreciate Saga a lot more than I have in the past, and I already appreciated it a lot. Uh-huh. But um, Gears has Gears is huge to me. It was the one that really got me interested in the whole series to begin with. But I, I think, like, unfortunately, it's just a side effect of fandoms in general. Um, you often see this happen in the Shin Megami Tensei fan base, where uh-huh. everybody is, and you get like those elitists who praise Nocturne, for example. And shun all the Persona fans, and then all the Persona fans shun the people who like the old school stuff. Mm-hmm. So it's just unfortunate. Um, nobody can, nobody has an open mind, and I guess that's something that we should try to promote. Hopefully, we can do it on this podcast. Try to promote a little bit more open mindedness because the teams, uh, Takahashi, you know, he has all these different ideas, and the teams are experimenting with all these different ideas. Yeah, it's not exactly the same as the previous game, but that doesn't necessarily make it bad. Just because it's not the same thing. Yeah, and like I, I received a piece of criticism a couple of years ago from another longtime fan, and I was like, she was, she said, you can't control how other people feel about it, and I took that to uh-huh. heart, and I sort of backed off of the argument and just posted positive things about what I like about the series. I. Uh-huh. I am no longer interested in trying to be the admin of my friends because the the community, well, at, at least Xeno Underground is very small, uh-huh. so I didn't want to be like a uh, forum police for a group of six people. Uh, so I'm I'm just I just want to focus on my art and my fan fiction when I can write it, and. Uh, like what I what I've got is is okay. What, what what's good is what's good, you know. Exactly. And I'm I'm very glad, uh, grateful to you both for starting this independently, and I'm I'm 
I'm really glad uh, also for Lugo Banda's group uh, because it's sort of like uh, it's no longer centralized and I, I think that's important. Mm-hmm. Like when um, when Godzib and um, Zeno Tensei went down uh, a lot of people just crawled into um, into Zeno Underground's boat <laughs> and they didn't really yeah. get along too well and I've, I've, I've wished for a really long time that another forum uh, with somebody younger with more time on their hands would come around and that's finally starting to happen and uh, I'm really grateful <laughs> That's good. Yeah, because I, I really, those were kind of like the highlights of my like middle school and high school days were going to Zeno forums since I, I had bad times around then as well. And the forums were kind of a, a nice escape to talk to people that like like some of the same things as me. So I, it's sad to see how forums are kind of dying off in general but it's it's cool to still see that there's still some community and positive community as well yeah and it's it's really hard to 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 get uh positivity in in communities because it's it's Uh so hard well it's it's hard to control people and i don't want to control people right (laughs) right uh, yeah yeah. Uh, but it's just like people these days are generally negative in general uh, mm-hmm. So any kind of positivity is great. Um, and I think I trail off before I started to talk about Xenoblade. Uh, Xenoblade came out around the time where I was uh, uh, another longtime friend of mine um, who had been in my wedding uh, had uh, dropped out of my life and I was feeling really bad about it. And then Xenoblade, Xenoblade 1 came out. And I really latched on to Mum Carr and uh, Dunban's story and sort of like used that to rationalize my feelings about my friend as, as we parted ways. Um, it was just like we, we didn't treat each other properly when we were friends and it led to a lot of bad blood. Uh, and like one of us took the leaving and the other one didn't. <laughs> and like I, I sort of alternatingly feel my point of view is done bands and sometimes the other point of view is on mum car in that situation um but um hmm. it's it's just really it gave me something else to focus on and i realized not a whole lot of like older xeno fans didn't really find find that uh particularly useful in their lives so like maybe like xeno blade doesn't have a lot of the things um people cared about in in the old uh, in the old series, um, but I I always find that um, I can find something useful in uh, in the, in a newer game, and I just try to keep my head up. Try to I also try to look for something to like, <laughs> just because I want to uh. I want to support the studio. <laughs> it's uh I, right. I, I'm always worried that uh, I will be too old one day and like be kicked out of Zeno Narnia. <laughs> No. But yeah, if I'm not too old now, I don't think I'll ever be too old. Like when I was ten, my father would take me to this sci-fi convention in Baltimore called uh, uh-huh. Balti- Balticon, and it was run back then when I when I was ten uh, by these people in their fifties, and they were in, they've been in fandom their entire lives, uh, starting with Star Trek and then so on. Um, so I I sort of see myself as being being a part of that. Uh, lifelong kind of thing. Yeah, Zeno. Yeah, Zeno fandom is forever. Yes. <laughs> yes. I mean, it becomes a part of who you are, you know. Yeah. And you share some stories, and you can look at these games, and then you can think about those memories that you have, and all the positive things that's brought to you. So, if anybody gives you crap about that, then that's on them. They're being idiots. Because as far as I'm concerned, that's 100 percent valid, and that's a beautiful thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exactly. I think um, Xenoblade 2, uh, I was a little bit worried about the like s- the sort of like waifu character design at first, but then I remembered <laughs> I'm not straight. I like girls too, <laughs> and I decided <laughs> I was going to enjoy it, <laughs> whether I liked it or not. And then Bridget happened, and I was like, yes! <laughs> 
And then um, I just paid attention to the story, and I think my favorite part of Xenoblade 2 is that it, it attacks uh, my uh, imposter syndrome. Like, Amalthus, like, is, like, just says the words, you're not good enough, and it's like, he, he's the bad guy saying to the good guy, hey, you suck. That sounds exactly like my little voice inside that says I'm not good enough. And Rex, God bless Rex. <laughs> I love Rex. <laughs> he's like, shut the fuck up, smacked out. <laughs> and it's very empowering, and I love that. And I will never forget that. Because I'm at I'm at a time in my life where I'm still like I'm in middle management at work. I I feel irrelevant, like continually, like increasingly old, increasingly like am am I allowed to be? <laughs> uh, that's always a problem mm -hmm. of mine. And uh, this just sort of like Xenoblade Two just comes out and says, "Yes, you are valid." <laughs> mm -hmm. At least that's what I took out of it. Oh, I'm... oh, that's that's great. Yeah, that's valid. I mean, anything you can get out of any of the games is valid, so that, that is really great. Yeah. Exactly. And I think that uh, something that people need to realize, because one of the things that people like to poke fun at Xenoblade 2 at is people like to say things like, Oh, Rex is so generic. Ugh. Hell of friendship. Ugh. Ugh. This is too lighthearted. Ugh. It's like, you know what? Yeah, it's lighthearted. Get over it. There are some people who really appreciate that kind of positivity, and they can use that to help them in their life. Like, I'm sorry that it's not the super edgy, depressing stuff that you really wanted to see, but don't go ahead. But don't go ahead and say that it's bad because, unfortunately, it didn't do much for you because it might do something for someone else. Yeah, and I really, uh, again, I I really think it's important to to keep positive uh, today. Like just. The current like last last five years, uh, the next five years are gonna be rough, and I think we, oh, yeah. we really need to, to keep our heads ab uh, above water. Uh, and I think mm. uh, light lighthearted stuff, stuff that that doesn't like make us cry like twenty four seven is really important. Like I've mm. noticed a lot of like children's shows being really dark at the same time of being really colorful. Like, I love Steven Universe, and I love its inclusivity, and I love its general message, but I have to steal myself before I watch an episode of it, because I'm like, are they going to make me cry? Because <laughs> I, I can't tell. <laughs> but I, I really like that Xenoblade 2 didn't rip my heart out as hard as I thought it was going to. Um, uh, Torna hurt a little bit. Um, oh, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, oh, no. yeah. That ending. Oh, my God. But I'm still rebounding 16 years later from Sharankov dying, so... <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's my my thing with, you know, sorry if I got a little off-topic and rambly, uh, but I think... No, I get... absolutely not. That's, that's totally fine. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, um, well, in that case, um, let's get on to the main topic. Um, yeah, this year marks the 20th anniversary of Xenogears. Yeah, it came out in 1998. Holy crap, that was 20 years ago. Yeah. So, um, well, yeah, they've been having, like, lots of anniversary events. More anniversary stuff than I actually expected out of Square Enix to give Xenogears. Yeah, I was really surprised. Yeah, because, like, Parasite Eve also turned 20, but I don't think anybody really yeah, like, I, said anything I, about that. <laughs> I love Parasite Eve, because it's another one of those, Me too. Like, uh, really, like, you're a girl, you're fighting a girl, it's empowering! <laughs> <laughs> There's not many of those, but, like, I, I, uh, it didn't hook me, like, for, like, Zeno Gears did. <laughs> right. I just like that Parasite Eve took place in modern day, at least at the time, yeah. and it had like a contemporary setting. It was just like uh, you're in New York City, like that. Just that's just awesome. Yeah, yeah I really enjoyed it. But, but yeah, Zeno Gears. Yeah, they had some concerts, which I was super jealous. I wish I could have gone I to. And, uh, I missed being able to pre-order the gold thing, and almost everybody I oh, got it. I missed oh, the yeah. gold thing. 
Oh, and that that uh, music box. Oh yeah. my god, the music box. Uh. Gold thing. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I I I'll, I'll stop before I lament about the, the the figures again. But no, it's okay. <laughs> Like, crying. It's, it's, you're valid. <laughs> so wait, I, I'm uh, because isn't Ellie actually supposed to be releasing soonish? I think or... they said December. I think so. Yeah. It's either Ellie or Welltall. I think I, yeah, I think Welltall might be last. Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, I, yes. But yeah, and then um, oh, what's that? Final Fantasy mobile game. There's so many of them. Uh, Final Fantasy Brave, Brave Exvius. Yeah, yeah. Because in Japan they had a, a crossover event with Zeno Gears, and when that, whenever they decided to bring that, you know, that content over here, there was the day I'll finally play Brave Exvius. I haven't installed. I got it years ago, but well, I guess a a year or two maybe. Uh, and it's it's a nice little game, um, but it's mm-hmm. very, it takes. It, it, it eats your battery, <laughs> and um, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not super into it. Uh, I'm also, like, I don't want to spend money on pixels that I can probably make myself, so... Uh, right. Yeah. Uh, y- I just, yeah. Hook me. <laughs> yeah, I, I usually, with those mobile games, I usually play them for, like, a week, and then I kind of just stop. Like, I'm... I downloaded Dragalia Lost to just kind of see what it's like, and that's a nice little game, but I'm probably going to drop it soon. Yeah. I think the the most hours I've logged in a mobile game is 10 billion husbands and 1 billion wives. <laughs> but then I got all the wives and the husbands, so I'm like, if I, I, I don't need to do anything anymore. Exactly. That's, that's usually what happens with those type of games. I'll play to get like my favorite characters. Like, if it's a Final Fantasy, I think it Record Keeper, I, I played it until I got Squall and maybe some other characters, but then I was like, oh, got my favorites, I'm done. Yeah, I think the the last time I logged into Final Fantasy Brave Exvius, I was trying to roll Ravis, because of course I, <laughs> of course I was. Because <laughs> uh, it's basically just Ramses with, uh, uh, <laughs> with the, the file numbers filed off, the serial numbers filed off, um, but... Um, yeah, uh, I didn't. I didn't roll them. I got. I got three Libertuses, and I was like, I'm not going to spend money, and I shut it down. <laughs> anyway. Oh yeah. So um, yeah. I uh, I don't know if there's anything other Zeno Gears 20th anniversary stuff that's happening, but um, it's kind of yeah, it's impressive with how they're treating it at the moment, and um. Uh, I guess I don't know what to say from here. <laughs> well, how about we talk about the actual game itself, and uh, I guess we can talk about getting to Cat's experience with the game. Uh, like, let's see, where can we begin? How about we talk about? Obviously, we all know the story and how. Yes, the second disc was weird to mm. put it lightly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But um. Kat, you mentioned uh, your favorite character, so why don't you go into more about how you felt about some of the characters. Okay, so I was not used to uh, my media being anywhere near talking about adult themes. Uh, I was used Mm -hmm. to video games sort of being looked at as sort of an adolescent pastime. Uh, Uh And then along comes Xenogears, and it's, it's very, like... Holy crap! They're they're talking about sex. Oh my god, there is sex. People are naked. <laughs> what is happening? Uh, it's just like Xenogears is a very like adult game, but it's not like not adult in the sense of it's porn. It's uh, adult in the sense of there's a lot of like really mature topics being talked about. And mm. I was not expecting to see as much of Ramses as I did. Uh, oh I, yeah, <laughs> Speedo Ramses. <laughs> just like. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, you know, on a on a side note, is this the first Square Soft game to have a sex scene? Possibly. I don't know enough uh, about history to, to confirm. 
Uh, but I think it might like, be. Like, I'm just trying to think about it. It might be, and I think it might even be, like, the last one in a long time. I can't think of another Squaresoft game that actually portrayed it. Yeah, I can't, I can't think of it either, because nobody, it, nobody gets naked in Final Fantasy. <laughs> right. No, I, I can't remember anything either. But yeah, uh, I think, uh, backing up a, a tad... Uh, when when you first see Ramses' portrait, you kind of like you take a look at it and just like this guy is not okay. Uh, he looks upset, and I was like, hmm, he looks interesting. I'm going to like just like put put a pin in it, like come back to him because he's he's going to be interesting later on. I thought to myself, and then then he was, um, but like uh, I think it's um, ever since I was very small I sort of like latched on to gray characters I I think the the first one that that was sort of like that was Cecil in uh, FF4 and, and also oh. Kane uh, they they have their their good points and their bad points and sort of like mm-hmm. uh, in in FF6 I was obsessed with Kefka for a little bit but not in a like oh he's so bishy kind of way but oh he's so <laughs> damaged that's very interesting to me um and also, I, I don't approve of <laughs> his actions, but I think he's the most interesting character. Mm-hmm. Uh, and sort of, like, FF7, um, I, I sort of, I, I, I did a bad <laughs> and became obsessed with Hojo for a really long time. Um, and I was just like, he's a terrible person, but I think he's the most interesting. Um, and I think, uh, I sort of... Uh, latch my Xenogears feelings onto Chrono Trigger in a way. So my favorite Chrono Trigger was Magus, and he had a a small posse of very memorable characters, the same as Ramses did. And I just sort of like see Ramses as a little bit of an extension of Magus. So it 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 adds that layer of more interesting to to it that other people might not get <laughs> when they, they they see me spouting about Ramses, and I was like, Cat, you're crazy. Sorry about that. I need to rest my finger for a bit. Oh, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so, it's just like, I'm, I'm not used to, like, with Xenogears, I wasn't used to the, the tall sprites and the, like, the the complicated intelligent story. It was like um, it was like everybody's an adult now. <laughs> Holy crap! So um, I I know in FF six they kind of uh, they 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 get sort of uh, they jump they jump the stakes up like a lot. Uh, Chrono, oh yeah. Chrono Trigger is kind of a step down from it. It just is is simpler. Um, but. Uh, and I'm like I'm completely stepping sidestepping FF7, which is which is also kind of an adult game, but it's just like it, it's not the same. And I know Xenogears was originally concepted as as a draft for FF7, so uh-huh. I sort of like I I know that Xenogears definitely isn't FF7, but I think like thematically, uh, Ramses's like. You wrecked up my prospects! Sort of echoes. It was like, I should have been FF7! <laughs> <laughs> and I, I just sort of like meta feel that, but I didn't really know about that until years later. Um, I, I myself has, have always had a problem with uh, self worth. Uh, so the more they revealed about Ramses' lack of self worth, and it, it comes off, uh, you don't really expect it. Is like you think this guy is, is perfect. He's got he's got the perfect everything. His his gear is covered in gold. He's got a hot not wife. He's got like a squad of chicks who like fucking worship him. But he's miserable. Why is he miserable? <laughs> and then you just like the the story just peels away the layers, and you're left with this like completely uh, ha- like how do you get up in the morning kind of, kind of, kind of character. And it's really amazing to see uh, a villain uh, that well layered within the story. And I uh-huh. was very surprised when he didn't join the party. <laughs> and um, I think 
with the uh, the lady elements, the the neo elements, the girls, my girls, mm-hmm. <laughs> call them my girls, <laughs> even though they're not mine, they're my girls. <laughs> um, uh, they spent uh, a long time on them as well, and I was just sort of like, ideally, if I were to, you know, like if, if I were suddenly Elon Musk, uh, I, I would definitely take care of Flint, Michigan first, and World Hunger. Well, world hunger <laughs> first, uh, but then I would fund um, Xenogears Disc Two uh, come back together and just like put all of the elements in the party, all the elements in Rimsus. Just, just like, <laughs> all right, let's go fight Deus with everybody. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I recently. Yeah, well, recently being a few months ago, I replayed Xenogears, so that that little part at the end where you could can watch like a like a not even a like a main cut scene of like what happens to Ramses and the elements was kind of it was kind of disappointing his ending like in the story was just kind of like kind of off screen ish and yeah so it definitely seemed like more should have done been done with him and the elementals yeah and like Something I wasn't expecting, like, in, in a game canon, was his relationship with Sigurd. And, like, they, they don't come right out and say anything, but it's it's pretty obvious that they, they used to be good friends, and they're not anymore. And it's sort of like, I, I love it when there's flashbacks in games to something that happened ten years ago. I love it when there's older characters with mysterious pasts or not-so-mysterious pasts. Because that's, uh-huh. that's, that's, that's what happens in real life. The older you get, the more you have these, oh, I stopped being friends with you moments. Um, and stuff like that. <laughs> what else? Uh, I think also, uh, I'm not done with Ramses, <laughs> but I'm sort of... Like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm never done with Ramses, but I, I also wanted to I talk know. about uh, Dominia. Um, when I was 16-ish, 17-ish, uh, I, uh, I, I definitely wasn't out as bisexual, um, but, uh, she was one of the first characters that made me realize, hey, I shouldn't hate myself for liking girls. And, um, they, she, she comes a long way within the story. She's, she's a terrible, she's a terrible bitch at first, and, like, I think she... Like as just as Ramses is completely breaking down during during the thing, she she builds up, uh, and she she stops and takes a look at herself, and you know, sort of like, not really, but kind of yes, joins the main party, uh, and I, I wasn't expecting that either. And um, usually, when you see uh, a female villain who slaps the main the main protagonist around and calls them calls them garbage and trash and you're not worth it, uh, you, you expect them to be, you know, just, just trounced and left behind. But uh, she she turns. Like, she turns more than Ramses does. And I thought, I thought that was amazing. <laughs> yeah, definitely felt like she kind of yeah, as you said, she kind of turned more than Ramses did. He, by the end of the game, he felt kind of, um, I don't know what to say. Um, I don't know. By the end, he's like, doesn't know what to do with himself. Yeah. And she kind of brings him back up. Yeah. So that was kind of an interesting flip yeah. between the two. And I, I. I try not to ship things these days, but I've been in this this thing for like 19, 20 years now. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> oh! So so now now I sort of multi ship uh, Dominia and Ramses and Sigurd and Ramses because uh, yeah uh, I'm incurable. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to think of things outside my usual favorite characters. Um, uh, I know that a lot of people tend to uh, thank Xenogears uh, for talking them out of being in uh, Western uh, like Christianity slash Catholicism slash whatever they they are at the time, and uh-huh. I I think it's the the only game that really criticizes uh, modern evangelism 
uh, and, and underscores the dangers within it. And of course, uh, when I first started playing Xenogears, I happened to be uh, in a somewhat charismatic, like, Christian youth group. Uh, but it wasn't Xenogears that, uh, that uh, talked me out of, uh, of that youth group. It was just like, it turned out that I was just like in, in the sway of a, a charismatic person. Uh, and uh, I think at first, if, if I had been uninterrupted, I think I would have like just been uh, that person. <laughs> Uh, luckily, I wasn't because it, it wasn't Xenogears that, that that put me off to it. It was uh, the Devil's Advocate <laughs> that seemed for the first time. <laughs> but I I know that a lot of other people um, Xenogears is is their their first questioning of the uh, structured religion that they that they grew up with, and I think um, Billy Lee Black's story and how he deals with it is a very real thing for a lot of people that I think is important. <laughs> Because um, he doesn't actually lose his faith, even though he, uh, it's revealed that, that the ethos faith is, is basically just something to control people. Um, uh -huh. And I, I think he handles his loss of faith much better than, say, Margulis's at the end of Xenosaga 3. Oh yeah, much better. Yeah. And I think that's, that's a mark of Takahashi's protagonists versus Takahashi's antagonists. Um, they they seem very strong and invincible and like very confident at first, but then like they, they slowly get chipped away, <laughs> and you're left with almost almost nothing. You're left, most most of them are are very broken by the end, and I think I, I really like that. <laughs> yeah, I do too, and especially yeah, as you said, with protagonists like like Faye, for example, he he. Uh... The way he kind of deals with past traumas by creating multiple personalities to kind of store away all of his bad thoughts or bad times that I thought was really, really interesting. And just, yeah, they did a really good job with having such broken protagonists. Yeah, and it's, it's really amazing that, uh, like, the... They, they, they build Faye up. They don't like they don't let him lie flat. They they explain mm -hmm. it and they bring him back together at the end instead of like, oh, I have to be pure, I have to I have to like defeat the evil within me. No, it's like no, it's like uh, I'm facing the evil that it was done because of this this thing that I created to protect myself. It's all part of me. It's all me. And I think that's mm -hmm. very realistic. And I think mm -hmm. um, people's a lot of people have a problem with uh, they they want to think that they're entirely innocent, but uh, and some people think that they're entirely bad. But I think it's recognizing that you can be uh, both of those things at the same time, and uh, it is important. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I don't think any other game really goes into that. Yeah, and I actually think um, it's kind of interesting how they handled Faye, to kind of go back on what we just said on that, uh, is that, like, for most of the game, Faye is pretty confused. Yeah. And you see this in, like, all sorts of different ways. And I know you were talking about, like, the different personalities, and something I, that I was just thinking about right now. We were introduced to Faye as a painter. Uh -huh. And he's shown in kind of, like, a very, a very almost, like, zen way where he's, he's, he's painting. And it kind of makes you wonder, like, if that painting, it was just kind of like a way to portray that he, 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 to kind of just portray him in kind of an innocent way, but also in kind of a mysterious manner, like, what is he painting and what is the significance of that painting and how that plays into his past and him trying to figure things out? Because throughout the game, he has all sorts of visions and all sorts of weird trauma even right down to right before he jumps into Welltall for the first time, that cutscene, which was a really cool one, where he's just kind of like, he has that second where he's just like, should I jump into this? What should I do? And then, of course, we all know that that ends very horribly. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, it, it's I, I've always found Faye to be an interesting character um, and an interesting way of showing someone who 
he's living, but he's not really sure what he's living. And I think that's it's it's interesting we'll have to see how that develops as a story. And it doesn't help that Seton is hiding so much from him yeah. <laughs> while while keeping up like that face of no, I'm just you know I'm just a mentor to Faye. I'm just showing him around. We're 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 taking him on a little camping trip. That that's kind of like this this farce that he's putting up for at least like the first ten hours or so. Yeah, I think. Um, when I, when I was playing as uh, Xenogears for the first time, uh, my friend was like, please do something other than FF7, please stop talking about Hojo. And I took one look at Satan, and I was <laughs> like, hmm, is he a good Hojo? <laughs> I'm always looking for, for cruelty-free Hojo. Um, uh, and I was like, okay, yeah, he's, he's like Hojo, but he's good. Uh, oh wait, no, he's not good. <laughs> wait, I think he's probably the most evil person <laughs> in Zero Gears, aside from Krellian. <laughs> uh, yeah, I always it's arguable. Yeah, because yeah, I always still remember the the scene where, uh, they're in. Uh, it might have Shavat. Um, no. Is it Solaris? Um, yeah, and with the um. With the can. The can. Yeah. He knew. He, he knew. knew what they were eating. He let them do it. Yep. He just he just let them do it and then just like, oh, hey, hey, guys, this is what you were eating, people. <sighs> I was like, damn. That was, oh, that was, mm. You know, the Faye figure comes with that can. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah, yeah. It does. So Satan's evil is present <laughs> even in <laughs> this figure. <laughs> I really hope that they make a figure of him. They really should. They really should. But that's something that um, we're seeing so much in Takahashi's characters. That deception where it leads you to believe one thing about them, only to kind of completely turn it on its head like ten hours later. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I also thought it was kind of interesting. Um, also, Ellie is kind of like that, yeah. too. Um, I, I really like her and Faye's relationship, and it's the very definition of complicated, yeah. Oh yeah, to say the least. Uh, I, yeah, I really, like, replaying the game again, I appreciated their relationship a whole lot more when I than when I did when I was, like, a teenager. Yeah, I, I was sort of like, I tiptoe around protagonists and try not to have too many opinions because... Uh, I don't know, I just don't get latched on to protagonists. Um, but mm -hmm. I really like Faye, and I really like Ellie, and I think they're very interesting. And they're they're interesting together. Um, I, uh, I... Let's see, I'm trying to think. My, my feelings about them as a couple are a little bit complicated. Um, I, I don't not ship them, um, mm -hmm. but I think... Uh, they, I, I think that their, the relationship Ellie has to the wave existence and Abel's relationship to, to the wave existence is, is really unique. And I think it's very interesting to have a story where, hey, there's this higher power that can communicate mm -hmm. with one person. Uh, and, um, the wave existence spends 10,000 years or more, uh, trapped in Deus, and I think the uh, the the way the story plays out about the the only two people at, at first that can that can save the way of existence from its ca captivity is very interesting. Like uh, at at the beginning, you don't really understand this part, but uh, Abel is making contact with uh, the Zohar modifier for the first time, and that that contact creates Ellie. Uh, as, as a way to communicate uh, to two people on, on the normal plane. And they sort of, like, both of them become, inter like, permanently intertwined. And it's, um, it's very, it's very unique. Um, they, they are technically eternal lovers, uh, but we don't see them having any children, um, except for, Emer uh, is it Esmeralda or e Emerald? <laughs> I forget. Uh, I, it's, it's, it's Emerald, right? 
Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Emeralda. Let me look that up real quick. Oh my gosh, I, I can't. I just played this a few months ago, and I yeah, it's Emeralda. Okay, like Emeralda is the closest thing that we're shown they have as a child. You know, like you'd think that oh, these these people have been in love forever, destined to be in love every time they they reincarnate, that they would have some sort of progeny, but we're not shown that. Like, um, I think Carlyan goes on about how. Uh, Ellie's relatives or something uh, carry carry her DNA chain, um, but it's 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 very. I, I thought it was very interesting and it's sort of like a mark of something written when 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 you're younger and when you don't have kids that uh, family is sort of excluded from from their relationship and um, I'm trying to think. Uh, but yeah, like it's it's always they they meet, they fall in love, they do the thing, <laughs> they do the do. <laughs> but yeah, uh, then tragedy always strikes. It's like either like Ellie is always like getting up and taking the bullet for Faye, or they both die. <laughs> um, uh, and it's just like it makes me wonder uh, if if there are timelines where they did get together and actually have kids and have a normal life. But uh, Takahashi's just mean and doesn't <laughs> want to show us the boring, happy time. Um, yeah, no, just show the, the, the miserable times. Yes. Just those. The miserable, important times when things happen. <laughs> but, um... They, uh, but yeah, I... I, when I was younger... And I hadn't been in any bad relationships yet. I had uh, expectations about how how I wanted, like h- how I wanted to be with somebody. And it, uh, as I was playing Xenogears, I was like, "This is so beautiful. Each of these people has one wing, and when when they <laughs> when they get together, they can they can fly." Um, <laughs> but uh, I think at the end, um, I, I guess that's the antagonist in me. I having been through a lot of bad relationships and people like uh creeping out on me abandoning me etc if you don't have both wings (laughs) and your head on your shoulders you just fly in a circle Um, i also think it's unfair uh to sort of like to stand the eternal couple um when what if your destiny is to be coupled with somebody who abuses you? Like I, I think that sort of like is is a Ramses slash Cherenkov ish thing. It's like maybe maybe his destiny is just to be fucked. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> and and you know um and what I played Nero Automata last year and I actually consider that to almost be like a second coming of Xenogears for that reason because yeah I'm gonna kind of spoil this a little bit but. There's kind of a similar thing going on with that, with 2B and 9S. How there's a constant oh, loop yeah. of them two having to get together. Yeah. And and each time, each iteration of it, something slightly different might happen. And because there's all these different iterations of a loop where uh, something might happen to 9S, quote-unquote, onto something, um, 2B's feelings have been changed various at various times because of it. And so I, I always thought that was kind of, that kind of echoes Xenogear somewhat with the whole wave existence and all the different generations of Faye and Ellie. I always thought that was kind of an interesting way to go about how you kind of have these two individuals that are basically destined to meet each other at some point. However, the means in which they meet each other might be a little bit different and their feelings about that can also vary too. I think um, I was watching the X Files. Uh, I think last year, uh, and there's a couple episodes where uh, Mulder ends up either hypnotized or drugged or something, and he he has this dream uh, where the girl of the episode is his lover, and for some reason uh, Scully is there too, but Scully is his father, and <laughs> I think like with with the whole thing like. Uh, they try to like mash uh, Mulder and Scully together as an OTP like on the show uh, a lot, um, but I thought it was very interesting that they that they went um, to that that place with that that dream state 
of molders, uh, and it sort of made me wonder uh, um, if reincarnation in Xenogears is always same gender, uh, same romance type. Uh, like uh, when I think of reincarnation, you know, I I could come back as a cat. I could come back as a dude. Right. I could come back as uh, my mother's mother, or I'm somebody I know's father. Uh, and in Xenogears, at least with Faye and Ellie, they sort of like they they're stuck. And I sort of wonder if that's the way of existence or not. It's like, mm-hmm. oh hey, I've marked you two. You two will yeah. forever be, you know, male and female. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah, and that's an interesting um, thing to think about uh, when it comes to just like having separate iterations and generations of what are essentially the two beings. What who's to say that there isn't one that they're not human? Or it can even extend to that, or they're not what we think they're. They're not male and female mm-hmm. per se. Mm-hmm. For all we know, there could be a same sex one, for example. Yeah, because like that could be something that would happen. I guess the game wouldn't portray it necessarily, but that could technically happen based on the wave existence. Yeah, I think they do a really good job of obscuring the wave existence's gender. Uh, we have no idea, no idea, uh, right. because it's probably beyond gender <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so what my, my little fan theory is that the wave existence sees uh, the point of contact and uh, sort of freezes both of them. So that he can, uh, he or she can recognize both of them when they come back to life, because <laughs> they're, they're always getting killed. They're always getting find, found by Niang or Kane, and they're like, uh-huh. "We're gonna kill you! We're gonna kill you! Oh, we killed you!" <laughs> <laughs> and like, I I always wonder uh, what Emperor Kane's face looks like. Uh, like a lot of, I think there's a line somewhere that. Then Emperor Kane sort of looks like Ramses, but not exactly, and it sort of like drives me nuts. And it's like, what does that mean? <laughs> it's not solid at all. And I sort of like, I was, I, I wish there was more with Emperor Kane, uh, R. E. His relationship with the Wave Existence. Like, uh, does he go to try to find the Zohar modifier at any point? Like, what is the Wave Existence's response to him? Like, we know his response to Faye, uh, and Graf, and it, um, but, uh, just, like, I, I wish there was more way of existence interaction with, with other characters, I guess, besides Grelian. <laughs> but I, this is me just thinking in, in my faves. <laughs> no, there's, unfortunately, there's a lot of things that I wish they expanded on, or had more like spotlight for certain characters, or well, especially several of the party members. Uh, Rico. Rico. R- Rico. Maria. And even to a lesser extent, like Maria yeah. and Billy. Mar- Maria for sure. Chu. Well, I mean, Chu is just a mascot character. That's really the only purpose of good old Chu. Or that one scene where you can have her nailed to oh, the God. cross. Choo Choo died for Choo. our sins. <laughs> Choo choo died for our sins. <laughs> I have some other friends who uh, don't really like Xeno Gears, but they like making fun of it. And whenever they think of it, they say, Choo choo died for our sins. And they laugh. And I'm like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. And every time I, because uh, I usually go on uh, trips to visit some friends in Pittsburgh, there's this uh, huge, huge cross. As I'm going into like Ohio, well, that... and it's just like every time I imagine just choo choo just <laughs> hanging up there, gigantic kaiju form choo choo. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. So um, I feel like I'm being very loud and uh, talky. Uh, what do you guys? What are things that you guys care about with Xenogears the most? Yeah, um, I really enjoy the atmosphere with Xenogears. I love them. This is weird, but something I love about Xenogears is the world map. (laughs) 
for for some reason, um, when I got to the world map for the very first time, and I believe the song's called Emotions, mm-hmm. and that started playing, I just like had this weird feeling where I was just at peace with everything, and I was just super excited to just run around and explore just every corner of the map that I could possibly like find. I don't know what it was. It just felt super liberating. Awesome. And um, yeah, it, it's it's one of those weird things that I felt when I first played this game. So- I really like that. I really like all the different areas. I loved exploring Solaris yeah. towards mm-hmm. the end of the first disc. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, I just thought that was such an interesting place to explore. And also because shit just goes yeah, down there. It there. <laughs> yeah, it, and I love that scene when it just comes crumbling. Yeah. The yes, yes. That was absolutely fantastic. Uh, that was a great scene. Um, I also really liked the, the uh, one scene early on. Oh, no, I can't remember the name of it. It was early on where you're in this like sand base and then it starts sinking and you have to escape. Oh, yeah, that's um, you're on like a transport, like right before. You yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I really like that, and uh, I love like the, I love the music too. Like I love the way that um, it, it, actually, here's the thing with the music. I love the music, but one of the things that's weird about the music is it's a very limited soundtrack. Yeah. If you notice, like they reuse a lot of the same themes yeah. for various different scenes and various different tones. Mm-hmm. So while while the songs are great, um, I remember there are times where you'll hear a certain song and it doesn't exactly fit. <laughs> yeah, like I know, I think Faye and Ellie sort of have a theme and Bart definitely has a mm-hmm. theme. But what is uh-huh. Rigo's theme? What is Billy's theme? You just don't know. Uh, yeah. Even Rams is yeah, yeah, the theme. They just slow down the boss music for him. Yeah, a lot of the characters. Um, and because I think like there's, oh, I was watching a video where somebody broke it down where like Gears' soundtrack is actually ridiculously small, especially compared to like Final Fantasy seven or eight yeah. at the time. And as a result of it, uh, they ended up reusing a lot of songs and and certain cutscenes where they probably shouldn't yeah. have. Yeah. And it's a shame because the music that is there is really, really good. It's just you kind of hear it more often than you probably should have. I think... But yeah, that was... It, sorry, go on. Uh, I was recently listening to Xenosaga's soundtrack, and that's even more condensed. Mm-hmm. Like, Oh, yeah. Especially the yeah. first one. Yeah, well, yeah, that was kind of the thing that, like, going through all these different dungeons and areas and there's absolutely no music playing is just kind of... Yeah. Uh, I mean, it, sometimes that can build atmosphere, but when it's, like, every... Yeah. It's almost every dungeon and every town, it's... Yeah. Yeah. And, I th- and, and unfortunately, I don't think that uh, Saga did the silence thing very well. Gears actually did it really well. There are certain dungeons that were very <laughs> silent, mm-hmm. but there's a lot of atmospheric effects... So it really, really felt like you're just in the zone. Because I used to, um, I used to be weird like this. When I played Gears, I was in high school. I would always play it like on a Friday night in the dark, door shut. So, it, so I'm just sitting in front of like this small CRT playing this, and it just like created just such an amazingly like engrossing and like immersive atmosphere where I'm just walking around, running around these dungeons. And then I hear the PlayStation disc spin before battle yeah. starts. <laughs> yeah, I think, um, I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, somebody else? Go. <laughs> uh, well, yeah, I, uh, like, I really like, uh, yeah, the, like, the dungeons as well. Like, um, I don't know why, like, I, like, kind of gravitate towards, like, the, the forest areas a lot, because they, they kind of just... They're different than a lot of other like forest areas and other RPGs because they, they kind of um, I remember like the forest and uh, was it like the Black Moon Forest at the beginning of the game? Yeah. It mm-hmm. it just really had like a like the music and like how the lighting is kind of darker because I'm I'm guessing because of the like the the trees and the leaves making it like darker. It just gave it like almost like a sinister vibe to it, and I really kind of dug that about that the like the forested areas yeah it was really beautiful especially your first time walking in there and it's uh a yasunori matsuda piece so like his forest themes are always like breath- breathtaking 
And oh, so yeah. something important always happens in a forest in Zero Gears. Like you, you, <laughs> yes. you meet Ellie there, and then on disc two, when Ramses like uh, finally wins against Faye, and uh, and you meet Tora and learn about Nana Machines, son. <laughs> 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 That's in the forest too. Um, yeah, yeah, the, yeah the, the sense of atmosphere and gears, I think they absolutely nailed it. And just the variety of locations and locales too was really, really well done, in my opinion. Every area felt distinct. Uh-huh. Um, I absolutely loved that. Um, I loved when you got Rico and you, you're, you know, you're in like that. You're trying to escape. That was such a cool. That was such a cool sequence. Even though the dungeon was a pain in the ass. Oh, God, those like, sewers. You're wandering through that sewer. Those sewers. Uh, I... The obligatory sewer level. Yeah, and you know what? That's like one of the th- that's one of the sections that actually prevents me from replaying Xenogears oh. because I really don't feel like going through it again. Well, the, well, but, uh... Yeah, cause that's where, uh, like, because I remember I was playing it on the Vita and I think it was like last year or something. I was like, "Oh, it's Sinogear's anniversary. Let me pick a, up my old save file. I wonder why I haven't played in a while." Oh, I'm in the sewers. That's why. Yeah, yeah, and that was just. Ugh. I did not care for that at all. But uh, something that I don't hear a lot of people talk about when it comes to Xenogears is the um, is it, in regards to the gameplay, like some of the mini games. <gasps> the mini games. Oh yeah. Yeah. No one talks about them. The card game. But the also fighter. the fighting game. Yes. Yeah. Which, I'm I'm all about the fighting game. Which randomly you have there is uh, not... Blade Gash in there. And I was like, why is Blade Gash in there? But not really anybody else. <laughs> yeah, it's it's so weird. And what's what's weird about that fighting game was like, yeah, it's in a story, um you, you play it once, but if you go back there, there's like a full yeah. fledged like it's like a fully fledged minigame. There's like a training mode, there's a two player yeah. mode. <laughs> And there's like no footage of it on YouTube. Well, there's there's a couple of videos, but like nobody seems to talk about that. And I just think it's weird that like they just threw this whole mini fighting game into this just just because. Yeah. And it seems like uh, it would be a lot of infrastructure to work on something like that when this two is just basically Faye and Ellie and Satan uh, taking turns with the chair. <laughs> Yeah, it becomes like a visual novel, and oh man, that was one of the things that that kind of annoyed me with it because I actually do like visual novels. I'm actually currently reviewing one, but the thing with that was what they were describing sounded really interesting, yeah. and I wanted to play it. <laughs> yeah, it's like this. Wow, this sounds really interesting, but it's just giving like a summary of what happened. Yeah. <laughs> I think my 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 most what the fuck moment with the the chair is. Uh, I think at some point Ramses uh, demolishes half of Nissan, and they don't have a cutscene for that. And then for some yeah, time, and right. he's, he's got right. um, I think Vendetta is his Omni gear, and he he picks uh-huh. up Ellie, like uh, just Ellie, not in her gear, just Ellie. And uh, at some point, Ellie Hannibal lectures him or something, and puts her finger out and does something, and Vendetta stops working. Uh, and it's like, they don't have a cutscene for that. It's just like, a picture. Why? Why are you doing that? <laughs> oh, it's such a yeah. shame. That That's one of the things with this game that's just like, if only, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and it's even worse when you go on some of the fan sites where people have dug in and found all the unused oh. assets and all those towns that... We're supposed to be in the game that you can explore, and it's all there, but they just didn't put it in the final build. And, oh. Yeah, but it. I guess it's good that we got we, we got. Otherwise, it would have ended at disc one, and we might never have yeah. seen any of that. I'm grateful for what we got. Yeah, it just ends with Solaris exploring. Uh, no. yeah. That would have not been cool. <laughs> no. <laughs> Also, no. um, speaking of not cool, what are each of you's least favorite thing about Xenogears? So, I know we were talking about mini games, but I I hated the card game. I'm sorry, I could okay. I, I couldn't don't remember the card game. Honestly, it's kind of I remembered it, it was hard, so I didn't do it. Yeah, long. yeah. It's just you basically. It, I guess it's pretty simple math, pretty much, but you had to, like, put 
cards on top of each other and try to get your deck done before your opponent. And I was just really, really bad at it. So whenever someone was like, hey, you want to play the card game? I was like, no. Yeah, I remember skipping it a lot of times. Just being like, eh, I don't want to play this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think for me, uh, my least favorite aspect about Zeno Gears... It's actually, it's actually kind of my least favorite aspect about Zeno Saga is uh, the battle system. Because, I, actually, I love the battle system, but I also hate it. I hate getting the new death blows. Oh. Because it never made yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, they don't really tell you. So you kind of just, like, took, like, maybe, like, a few hours in, and you stumble into the menu. It's like, oh, hey, there. what are these... Yeah, what are these moves? And I remember, uh, I remember watching, like, a video of um, some other death death blows, and I'm like, I could do those the commands for those, but why can't I actually unlock the death blow? And it was weird, because it was like, you had to keep yeah, using just, just... one attack, like the normal triangle attack, or a normal square attack, a bunch of times, and then you might unlock it. Yeah. It never made sense You, to you have to basically do the input for the moves a certain amount of times, and... Once, but that didn't work sometimes. It was it was weird. There was actually an accessory you could equip that could make you learn death blows quicker. Yeah. I remember I I th threw that on Faye if, and a few others a few times, but still, I just remember going around, just getting into random battles, hoping that this battle would be the battle I would get a new death blow. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I wish that was, that was the case. And also, another thing, um, maybe I was just really bad at the game at the time, I felt like some of the Gears battles, um, you didn't have access to a lot of healing items until, like, very late. So a lot of, like, those early fights, you really needed to, like, plan each turn carefully, where if you messed up one or two turns, you're, you're going to lose a battle. Yeah, oh, and the, and the other thing, like, with death blows, like, for the Gears, in order to get, like, stronger death blows for the Gears, it depended on you getting stronger death blows for the characters. Right. So that really bothered me because I would have to like do a lot of like if I didn't have like strong enough attacks, I'd have to like go back to being in my character form and like train to get more death blows so I could use more death blows in my gear. Yeah. And it was really tedious. And the, yeah. yeah, that that was very, very, very tedious. And again, like you didn't have I feel like the gears needed more um ways to heal. I know Ellie had some really good spells. In fact, I think Ellie was one of the most overpowered gears. Oh, yeah. She had that one move. She had that one move. I think it was called, like, Air Rods yeah. or something like that, and it did, like, a ton of damage. Mm. That's what you get when you're the conduit for the wave existence. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. She was really good. I love them. Um, Billy had a cool move, and uh, and I forgot the name of his, his gear. Oh, hold on. Let me look it up real quick. Billy had this one really cool move where it was the uh, the Jesse yes. Cannon. That was yes. Like, hey, Dad, show I up, love the please. Jesse Cannon. <laughs> yeah, it was like the mini guy came in and he just transformed. Yes. But that was that was so cool. Like those, it was moments like that where you know, the, I guess like because I don't guys remember that. Yeah, we're anime. Yeah. <laughs> we got to do something kind of fun like that. Um, the G Elements fight was cool because I am almost convinced that was an Easter egg and reference to the Brave series. I don't know if anybody's familiar yeah. with those. Like, stuff mm -hmm. like Galgagar. Galgagar was an anime that was out around the same time as Xenogears. And in the Brave series, most of the robots have, like, lions. They have, like, lion faces oh, on their chest. And G Elements basically does the same thing. And if you look at the transformation scene, it's, like, shot in a very similar way to, say, Galgagar. And uh, even the lion roars in a very similar way. So it's like something small. I'm convinced that's an Easter egg to it. It has to be. Because it, it just seems too perfect. Also, if you look at that cutscene and play Rosa's theme from Xenoblade 2, it works awesome. perfectly. Re really? I thought you were going to say Rosa's it, theme from FF4. <laughs> no, no, not that theme. <laughs> No, no, yeah, that, you play that, uh, just watch, like, that cutscene where they're transforming and then play the Xenoblade 2 Rosa theme. It works beautifully. Wow. <laughs> it also works well with Erde Kaiser, too. I, yeah. I was really bored one day and I was just, like, doing, like, some mashups of them. But, yeah. Well, Erde Kaiser is a direct reference to G Elements, isn't it? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I, I would definitely think it is. It is if it hasn't been confirmed already. I, I, I guess they they might not have the ability to confirm it because of uh, Xenosaga was Namco and Xenogears was Square. Right, uh, right. I guess I'll go. My least favorite thing in Zero Gears was the Opiomorph fight. Uh, it's Miang's gear uh, that you fight like right before um, Miang becomes Ellie, or Ellie becomes Miang. Um, that <laughs> okay. Fight, yeah, that fight is a gimmick fight, and I was trying to go through the game with as little player's guide help as I possibly could. And right before that fight is Ramses' big backstory cutscene, which is unskippable. Uh... <laughs> I wiped like ten times. <laughs> By the end of it, uh, I was like, I hate Miang. I hate Miang. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Miang. She's the most evil person in the universe. <laughs> and that that, that um, colored my opinion of Curlian and Miang more than it probably should have. Um, <laughs> Uh, and to this day, I'm like, I, I will remember this forever. Uh, and I was watching um, Cordelium speedrun Xenogears once, and he killed her in one hit, and was like, What? Yeah, I, I feel vindicated and three inches tall at the same time. <laughs> Thank you, Cord, <laughs> for doing that. Um, but yeah, I think a, a lot of other people say that the platforming at Babel Tower is the uh. I think my husband played up until Babel Tower, and he just quit. Because, <laughs> uh, yeah. And uh, yeah. you get halfway up, there's no save points. Or, or I think you have like one save point either before or after you have to fight all of the elements. <laughs> oh, God, yes. Yes. That's that's it for, for that. Uh, what is you guys' favorite thing about Xenogears? So actually, before we get on to that, um, I don't know if you know this, but someone actually found out the uh, voice sample and the boss theme. What? You know, like, where where it's just like, it's like that weird, yeah, like, voice where bar, 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 it's bar, hard bar. to hear. What... <gasps> yeah! Yeah, yeah. So that someone actually found out where that's from, uh -huh. and that one is actually a sample, and I believe that is from. Hold on, I will. I'm about to bring it up right now. Oh yes, it is from a documentary on Marlon Brando. Oh. What? It's a yeah, because the the line is uh, total sentence imposed is ten. Hold on, let, let me. I, I can bring it up right now. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, hold on. Oh my god, this is one of the biggest mysteries. I'm excited now. Yeah, yeah, because I, I was on YouTube and I was listening to the music, and then somebody posted it in the comments. Like, yeah, that's that's where this is from. <laughs> it is. It's so nuts. That is so random. Um, yeah. So da -da 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 -da, last year, documentary on Miranda was released called "Listen to Me, Marlin." Yeah. It's, okay, so they're showing footage of like the trial, and they're talking about the sentence. And this, the line they sample from it says total sentence imposed is 10. And then they repeat that. And that's what that voice oh is. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to post it in the in our little chat so you, so you can listen to it. But, yeah, it's one of those weird, random as hell things <laughs> that they just kind of threw in there. I never would have I, guessed. I, yeah, I never knew this. This is weird and awesome. My husband always jokes that it's something, something, sex in a gas chamber. <laughs> yeah, someone says having sex in a poison gas chamber. <laughs> having sex in a poison gas chamber. Having sex in a poison gas chamber. <laughs> <laughs> but I love that song because it was just like, it made those fights feel yeah. intense. Mm -hmm. Like, I, again, I used to play this game yeah, I used to play this game in a dark room, and so, like, hearing this was just, like, it just put me in the zone. Hold on, I am going to send you the source right here. Thank you so much. So you can listen to that. <laughs> wow. That this is, is the source of it. And you can play it. It's like a, like a five-second clip. You'll hear it. You'll be like, oh, my goodness, that's what they said all these years. Holy crap.
Wow. Wow. That's so cool. Yep. That 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 is really cool. But wow. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Oh, well, yeah. And so I guess um, I, I'm i lame. I was going to say my favorite thing was going to be like the characters because, of course, Sinnoh Gears has amazing characters. Yeah. Like, it's not lame. <laughs> I mean, as much as like a bunch of them get, because I feel like Xeno Gears might have had too many characters at times and they unfortunately got swept to a side. I, I, it did, I did like how the, the series, I mean, the game almost had like an anime series kind of feel, how it was kind of episodic with its characters' stories. Um, like, there's the, like, basically a, a Billy arc and a, a Rico arc and a, a Maria mm-hmm. arc. I really liked that aspect of it, and I sometimes wish that they would make an anime of Zeno Gears. That'd be so I cool. Think it, I think it could be adapted well, um, but hopefully better than the Xenosaga anime. Oh, but yeah. <laughs> no, let's not get back to, into that one. I need to drink. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like um, like Faye and Ellie, uh, they have a, a, a beautiful uh, relationship. And I, I remember my favorite scene between the two of them is um, like when uh, the uh, Yggdrasil gets shot down. And they're like surviving on a, or well, not Yggdrasil got shot down. The Yggdrasil shot down the Goliath that they were on, and they're like on, like floating on some parts, and oh, yeah. they have this. Yeah, it's like my favorite part from the game. It's just like the, it's just Faye and Ellie surviving out in the ocean, and uh, they like have this conversation between each other where they like. Uh, f- they basically have no idea what they're doing with their lives. Like both of them, like say that as much, and it's just they're really supportive of each other, even though they don't know what they're doing with their lives. And it it resonated with me because I have no idea what I'm still at almost thirty. I, I don't know what I'm doing with my life. So it was just a really powerful scene, and I that was it's probably my favorite scene in the entire game. If it makes you feel any better, Tyler, I'm 36 and I still don't have any idea what I'm doing. <laughs> so yeah, what about you, Justin? Um, yeah, I guess like I kind of went into my favorite aspect of Zeno Gears, which is really the atmosphere and just the overall feel of each of the areas. I just had a lot of fun running around and exploring, even if the encounter rate oh, drove yeah. me nuts at times. I did love running around. I like the aspect, the fighting. I like the aspect of martial arts mm-hmm. in in the fantasy game. Like I thought it was kind of cool that, oh hey, I'm playing as a main character who's not using a sword for once. He's using his yeah. fists. That was kind of awesome to me. Um, and, I, and that was actually what drew me to Zeno Gears at first. I was like, hmm, robots in martial arts. Yeah, I'm gonna play this. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I really, really adore the atmosphere. Um, the characters, I want to say I I love the characters, but unfortunately, it's just like, it's such a mixed bag of genuinely great and just completely, uh, completely undercooked. Yeah. Like, there's some characters that are, that have really good arcs, like Rico. Rico had an alright arc when he was introduced, but unfortunately, that's all we really yeah, got. I, I feel like, Billy had uh, it. they, they only did the... The season one of the character arcs for right. the Xenogears characters. Absolutely. They needed, uh, their season two arc and their season three arc, like Faye and Ellie had theirs. I completely agree. Um, yeah, Billy was the same thing as well. You know, they all had they had good arcs, um, but I wanted to see a lot more from that. I want to see a lot more from Billy. I want to see more from Bart as well. And also uh, something that kind of a uh, kind of weirded me out was its use of English dialogue. It just felt so inconsistent. Like yeah, they had it in the anime cutscenes, which by the way, from a technical standpoint, they did a really good job with them. 
They're not compressed at all, and they look well. They are compressed, but they're not as bad as what I've seen on the same console. So they look really good. Mm. But but I really um, I, I think the voices were kind of weird how they used them because some cutscenes the cutscenes had them, but then just randomly they were just throwing an English line like a spoken line just out of nowhere, and and then you won't hear another one for like twenty hours. And I was kind of just like, why? Yeah, and the English, the English voice acting for Zero Gears wasn't wasn't great. Oh, yeah, lip syncing was terrible. There's that one cutscene with Ellie. Oh yeah, where she straight up like her mouth says like a whole sentence, and you're yeah. hearing nothing coming out of it. There's that, but yeah, and I and I also thought it was weird how they would just have voices just randomly. Um, what was it? The guy at the very beginning that was pissed off at Faye. Because Faye basically killed oh, his yeah. sister. Mm. Yes, when you when you fight him in the tournament, and then he just throws, and then I think he has like a line that he says at you, and then he throws a dress yeah. at you. Like you know, you got that, or Bart had that one random line where he just calls someone yeah, a jerk. Yeah, I think they they and, use those lines in the card game too. And yes, think, uh, they at do. one point, Ramses screams during his nightmare before he wakes up in the speedo, and I actually think that's one of Faye's uh, screams, which I always thought was weird. I noticed it was just so easy for me to notice. They couldn't even afford a, a, a voice actor for Ramses. Nope, no, no voice acting for the <laughs> trash. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just thought that was kind of weird how they did the dubbing and where they threw in voices versus where they didn't because again it would have been nice that if other scenes got that treatment yeah it would have been really nice yeah okay is there anything else anybody wants to talk about in regards to Zeno Gears? Uh, I think I forgot to mention uh, yes my favorite era of Zeno Gears is the Zeboin mm. era uh, but <gasps> oh yeah, yeah I, I also really like the way it's presented to us, like, I mean, we get there and everything's, like, completely di- dilapidated. It's been, like, what, 7,000 mm. years? And it just sort of reminded me of the scene in Back to the Future 3, uh, where uh, Marty discovers uh, the, um, the DeLorean and the tires have rotted off. And this is like this this ancient piece of machinery that isn't ancient, but it's modern, but it's it's totally busted. It, I got the same feeling going through Zeboim as I did that that part of the movie. And I think uh, it's on record somewhere that uh, Tak- Takahashi really loves Back to the Future. Uh, and I, I wonder if any of that is derived from that scene. Hmm. You know, I always got that vibe because there's that it was off topic, but in Xenoblade Cross, there was the side quest with like the time traveler oh, yeah. and his assistant, and it always reminded me of Back to the Future. So I didn't know if that was Takahashi's influence or not. So if you listen to uh, the Gormok theme in Xenoblade 2, uh, mm-hmm. there is a point where it sounds like Johnny Be Good, <laughs> and I can't unhear it. <laughs> That's interesting. I actually think the quest yes. clear theme sounds like the Back to the Future theme yeah. as well. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it, it's literally yeah. the thing. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I think I'm done talking for now. Uh, it was lovely. <laughs> Thank you for having me. Oh, thanks for yeah, thanks for joining us. Um, yeah, for sure. Um, okay. Uh, well, I guess we can wrap up things here. Um, Thank you both for the discussion about Zeno Gears. Happy birthday, Zeno Gears! Yay. <laughs> um, so let's, uh, I guess, go around and uh, say if there's any like projects or anything you want to promote. Um, uh, Justin, is there anything you'd like to promote? I'm I'm so sorry that like every episode, it's like you promote a panel that you're gonna do, and then it's like week weeks yeah. later that this panel's <laughs> over. So I apologize. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know last episode I spoke about um my RPG panel, which has now passed since it was during uh, Comic-Con and the Anime Fest. Um, otherwise, I am working on a review currently for a DS visual novel. Um, actually, you know, I'll just say it. I'm working on a review for 
Jake Hunter. Oh, the, the anybody who's ever played. Oh, the that. new Jake Hunter. Yeah, the new. Oh, one. yeah, I played the one on uh, DS a long time ago. Yeah, they just released a new one on the 3DS. I'm currently playing that. It, it's okay so far. Um, if you like mystery games, I think you'll probably enjoy this one. <laughs> Um, yeah, I'm actually liking it. Uh, yeah, so that's probably the main thing I would plug right now. I will be at Anime NYC in a few weeks. That's going to be in November. So, yeah, I don't know if you're, you'll see me on that. Uh, uh, by the time this airs, it'll probably be past that. Oh. But, oh well. I'll, I'll, I'll try <laughs> to have this done by November. <laughs> I, I still need to edit the last episode, though. Yeah. Because this is like, this is our episode Five, yes we're we're definitely yeah. backed up yeah <laughs> yeah episode five yeah i mean hey that's a good thing that if it's episode five i think i think we're, we're off to a good start here episode with five this. of itself oh, oh damn. <laughs> Cat, <you just> <laughs> <my mind>. nice <laughs> yeah that, otherwise um that's really all i can plug right now uh there i am working on some other projects uh, i just did some recording for something else that i will announce in the future so yeah stay tuned you might be seeing more of me <laughs> all right um cat is there anything you want to plug i mean there's uh the lovely zeno underground if ever, anybody wants to check that out yes uh, if anybody wants to Google Zeno Underground, it's uh, zenounderground.net. Uh, we have forums. Um, they may or may not the, the ads may or may not come back for guests, uh, but I, I'm paying to keep them off for uh, users. Uh, I my, my own Twitter is Cadmus underscore Prime, uh, and I guess um, if you are for some reason uh, like me and like Ramses too much uh, and like fanfiction. Uh, <laughs> I have not stopped working on my Xenogears fanfic called Asymptote. Uh, and if you want to Google that, that is on uh, AO3 and I believe my own website, uh, spadenet.net. Uh, huh. I am not doing any cons until next year. I think I'll be at Katsucon next year. I have no idea if okay, I'll be nice. selling my art, um, but I don't know. <laughs> Her art's amazing, by the way. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I just love your distinctive style. I, I, I love it. Thanks. I think, like, half of it comes from the... It's, it's influenced by the pointiness of the gear design in Zero Gears. But, yeah, I can definitely see that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, uh, as far as me, I, I, I'm at Cosmos Chaos on Twitter. Um, I'm not as exciting as you two, so I don't really have much else going on. Um, I'm still not working on Zenokami, and that's my fault, because I'm awful. No, you're not. <laughs> One day, one day, one episode, I'll say, I've coded a little bit of that thing, but not at the moment. Coding is rough. Yeah, and I'm, well, I'm at the part where I need to, like, I have to play through the rest of Xion's arc, and I don't, my Japanese is terrible, so I need to record and also get as much text and dialogue recorded as I can but I don't want to accidentally stumble and get farther and miss something so I it, I'm kind of overwhelmed by the prospect of it at the same time but one of these days one of, one of these, these days. days yeah <laughs> hopefully alright um, as far as next episode I'm uncertain what the topic will be just yet um, I know last time when we were talking to David, he uh, suggested uh, an episode about uh, the Zeno series and r religion, which I think would be a really interesting topic to discuss. Yeah. So it might be that or it might not. I might post a, a poll on Twitter or something to see, gauge some interest. But yeah. Um, this has uh, been pretty much the episode. Thank you very much again, uh, Justin and Kat, for joining me, and hope you all have a good night. You too.
Me too. And thank you for listening, yes, thank everybody. You for listening. Bye. Bye bye.